What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Garage Topics. Today, we're going to be pimping out the Elantra. Not the S2000. We got more stuff for this, but today we need to make sure that I can drive, survive, be alive. Let's go. As you can tell by the title of the video, I'm pimping out the Elantra. We're doing the headlights. Uh, I wanted to do a legitimate retrofit, which can cost upwards of close to a thousand bucks if you do it top end, notch, top notch stuff. I've done this a couple times before. I've, I've done the retrofit once. I've baked open headlights three or four times. I'm gonna try a cheap alternative because the car is not worth that much and I don't wanna sink a ton of money into it because we're trying to save money by having the Elantra, but we're trying to keep it to last as long as possible. And so these headlights are gonna enable us to do that. So I've got new headlights and the HID assembly, uh, the projector, and then LED headlights. So let me show you what, the, what I got. Before I do, just to give you a heads up, this is what I'm dealing with. Can't see crap all at night. This is miserable. So we got to get rid of those. And even when they are clean, like this passenger side one is, you still can't see anything. They're not very good headlights. So we got to fix that. All right, let's go over some parts. First things first, got to be drinking some beer because this is, uh, I've done this before, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. So Sam Adams. Hmm, tastes like Boston. All right. First things first, instead of messing around with the headlights that are in there right now, which are all hazy, got some brand new headlights. The beauty of this Hyundai is, I got two, I got the driver and the passenger side, 70 bucks shipped. This is crazy. Typically, you have to make sure you rush or make sure you're speedy so that you can drive your car because you're using the actual headlights that came in the car. But by getting these, I can take my time and I'm getting brand new headlights. It also looks to me as though the inside of this is black where the stock ones are gray. So this is super KDM. But next up is these projectors. I got these off of Amazon as well. These are kind of, I'm a little skeptical about these, but from the reviews, they actually were pretty decent. Sure, they might not have the good cutoff line like other ones, but if I can get safe HID slash LED light projected down the road, that's all I'm caring about. So these are, I think about 30 bucks, crazy. So we got two of those, and to finish that off, we have some LED bulbs. Again, these are a little bit cheaper ones. I had LED bulbs in the G8. These were considerably cheap. I think these were about 39, 40 bucks for the bulbs. And from what I read, they had a good reviews. So let's see if they're any good or not. And if they aren't, they're cheap enough. So I could just make my mistakes and move on and get the better stuff. But I'm curious to see how long they last. So I'll, keep an, I'll do an update on all this stuff when we're finished building it, as long as we don't break anything. But first things first. These headlights, obviously you cannot get the projectors in the back, it's not enough room. You may have seen this on the internet before, but you bake them. I've done this a couple times, it's kind of sketchy, but you gotta use the oven in the kitchen, make sure that your family or your wife is not there, or your dog, because your dog will start thinking he's getting dinner, but he's really just getting a headlight. So let's take these inside, I'll show you how to bake them, and we'll, what we're gonna do by baking them is separating the lens from the backing of the headlights so that we can put the projectors in. We're in Club Dirty headquarters right now. Got the good old oven. First things first, you want to turn it on. Duh. Uh, figure out what the lowest your oven goes to. This takes forever to go down, as you can see. I'm looking for uh, something around the 200 range. So once you get it set, you got to let it preheat, obviously. So sit around, drink some beer, pet your dog. Ernie, come on. Don't you huff and puff. Come on. Ernie, come on. Come here. What are you doing? This is E Sizzle. E Sizzle's the garage dog, kind of. He's the coolest. Where are you going? Oh, he doesn't like beer. That's probably what scared him. All right, so I'll just drink alone. A step I forgot. You're gonna wanna make sure you have enough room in your thing for the headlights. You probably have to do one at a time. But, take that tray out. All right, that's gonna fit the Headlight, still heating. We're heated up now to 200. We wanna get a baking tray. This may be overkill for these headlights, but I've seen other people do it. You want some towel that's, I make it wet so it's not gonna catch on fire, but you don't want the pan to be hot sitting on the plastic and make a crease somewhere. It probably would be fine, but you get that ready. And then one headlight at a time. So, take it out. People take these out. I don't think it matters for this case, so we keep them on. You can see here that it's touching the edges a little bit, so I'm gonna unravel the towel just a little bit. 
so that it's not touching the metal. And I'm gonna put these in here for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna check it at about seven minutes. You just want it to get hot enough that you separate the glue between the plastic and the backing. All right, and in it goes. Make sure nothing's touching, looks good. There's plenty of room for that. Now we wait. I think it's been seven minutes now. They probably aren't done, but just to be safe, we'll check it out. So tools you need to separate them. You could just use your mind if you want by just spreading them apart, but wear some gloves because it'll be a little bit hot. It won't be burning hot, but hot. And I use some junky screwdriver. If you've got a butter knife and your family's not in the house, use a butter knife because that's a really good one. Let's see. All right, so it smells plasticky. I don't think it's hot enough yet. I think it's hot. Oh, it is hot enough. So there's these tabs all around the sides. You want to separate those by just pulling at them. And then you just try and tug it apart. It feel, it'll feel like you're breaking it. You gotta find the resistance of your headlight. These ones don't, must not have another goop because this is relatively easy. Oh man, yeah. This is, a, this is a cake. This is one of the easiest ones I've ever done. Maybe because they're new and from China, they have less insulating stuff. Um, let's start back up here. The glue is gonna be a little goopy, so just be careful of that. Popping through. Tab down the bottom here. Weird. Cool. This was surprisingly easy. Normally it's a goopy mess, but it looks like this seal is so new that it didn't start to goop yet. It just needed to be a little bit warm. But there you have it. Sometimes stuff like this will come loose, like the glue up here. So while it's still hot, just press it back down. Man, that was super easy. So. I'm gonna do the other one, but that's how you do it. Once we're done with this, now we can put the projector inside here. We'll go back to the garage and do that. We're finished putting these in the oven. We're back in the garage now. And what we have is two separate pieces. The lens is separated from the backing now, so carefully put the lens somewhere where you're not gonna scratch it and also not gonna get dust in it or smudges on the inside because that'd be a pain to try and clean the inside of the lens. So for me, I'm gonna put it back in the box now we're left with the backing of the headlight. And so what we need to do now is we need to get the projector to fit into this piece here. But first, I wanna make sure that these projectors work. So what you gotta kinda of do is like bench test them. Uh, that means different things. For this purpose, we wanna make sure that the high beam, low beam switch works. So what does that mean? So there's a cord coming off of this. This power cord is activated when the high beams come on or off. You have to tie this into the high beams. But what this does is there's, uh, this projector could beam out light everywhere, but this little lens in here cuts it. And that's what creates that line with HID. So you're not blinding everyone going down the road. What you wanna do is you wanna connect 12 volt power to this projector. And I would do it like 30, 40 times. Make sure that the lens flips open and closed. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so on this example, I've cut the connector piece that came with it on the end and then stripped it and then give myself some wire. And what you wanna do is you want, in my case, in this super fancy experimental lab, you wanna hook this up to make sure that the lens flaps back and forth. So ground and ground. Be very careful doing this because this is 12 volt power. Ground in and then I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the lens opening and closing. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you see the thing above the spring? This line here, that's what cuts on and off. So let me show you. So that's allowing high, that's high beams, that's low beam, creating that cutoff line. High beam just scatters light everywhere. But you wanna make sure that this mechanism works because it would suck to do all this work, have everything installed to then have this fail and have to take everything apart again. Now that we know the projectors work, now we can put the projectors in the headlight housing. Oh, if I can get them out of the box. All right. So, as it stands right now, 
they're not gonna fit. If you can see here, there's this cap thing, I guess, that covers the original bulb, so you don't get direct light coming from that, so that's not gonna fit. Thankfully, that's pretty easy. Most cars have these that have just the standard projector headlights, non-projector headlights, I mean. It's just one screw. And watch this, about to be some magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. One screw, and then it comes out. And that allows you to put the projector in. Next step, uh, it's just a matter of fitting it in, I believe. So we'll just fit in with that projector bit. No, this projector from the box has this bit down here to keep the new bulb in. It's three screws, we'll take those out and then it'll fit through because it'll be skinny enough. Be careful that you don't drop these screws into the projector because that would suck. So now that this is skinny, it has this lock bit we're gonna take off because we need it to be as skinny as possible and they know this because that's what everyone's doing with these projectors. Yep, that fits in there good. So before we start screwing this down, we need to put on the shroud, a nice and shiny shroud. And this here goes right on to here somehow. And then the, the, the screw holes are on the back. So the shroud's on, there's nothing on the back, so it's skinny enough, so now this is ready to go through. Thankfully, these guys tell you which one's the top and the bottom because of that cutoff line for low beams versus high beams. Uh, and the top is this, and this shroud only mounts one way to this projector, so that makes sense. This is fed through now, but it's not gonna stay there. We have to use some of the supplied washers and lock nuts to put it into place. And there is one mount for the stock bulb in the back here still, so we're gonna take this out. This uh, springy thing, toss it to the side. The kit comes with them, so we're good. So this kit came with the projectors. This has the different style washers and uh, gaskets that you may need to get this to sit in place correctly. Uh, I just found a free screw. The big ones, I'm not gonna need those. The small one I need. So I'm gonna put this gasket and then this metal bit and I'll show you what this actually does for us. All right, so this gasket will go down in here. And that's gonna stop condensation from coming here and making yourself have a crummy day. Yeah. All right, so that's in place. You can't see it because that rubber gas is in the way, but this tab here goes on the bottom. So that presses in. And this locking nut, we don't want to completely tighten down because I've read horror stories of them stripping on here. Loose with your tightening. I would not put any pressure on whatsoever. It'll eventually catch the thread and then it'll be extremely easy to turn, but getting on the thread initially is a pain in the ass. Right, and so when it gets to be no longer easy to tighten by hand, like just stop because we want to make sure that we're adjusted correctly. And now it's loose, but it's not going anywhere. That plate is holding it in place. And so now that's in place. Let's get ourselves an LED bulb, hella fresh. That's going to act as the parking lamp. Now it's we just have to put the HID bulb in which this, this guy right here, it has the fan cooling shroud thing on the side of it. And the plug plugs actually into the OEM plug on the headlight, which is great. So slide this in. I've got this microfiber cloth down so that we can lay it down and the projector won't get scratched or anything like that. It's in safe condition. All right, so we've got the bulb ever so slightly snug in here. It doesn't twist at all. It kind of just sits in place. You really need that clamp to push it down, but you can't screw that screw with the clamp in place from what I can see. So it's not going anywhere. We'll just be real careful. It's plugged into the OEM mount here. So now we're gonna put it on the car to see if the line's level. Once we find where the line is level, then we can tighten it down. This is terrible. You can't see anything at night. Just, it kind of just scatters light everywhere. 
And we've, we've cleaned this headlight before, but it just keeps coming back. So it's, it's time for a new one. And we're upgrading Club Duty Fresh. All right, everything's loosely in here, but we're gonna put some power in it to make sure that the light is flat. We're not trying to line it up or down, we're just trying to make sure that it's flat. So let's see. It's completely crooked, as you can see. So, just since we didn't tighten it, we just slowly turn it. And then we go. That's about as flat as it gets. Um, we'll turn the lights off and make sure that it's super flat. As you can see, the line isn't super crisp. It's a little wavy here and there, but I just looked at the price. I paid 25 bucks for these projectors, so I can't really complain. As long as we're not blinding people and I can see down the road, that's all I care about. The headlights are bolted into their correct position where they would be in, in the car. And I've just played around making it flat as I possibly can. And once we get it flat, I'm gonna tape the housing, at least put some painter's tape on the shroud to the back of the housing just to keep it somewhat aligned. I'll tighten it a little bit more so it's pretty damn tight and then we'll make sure it's straight and we'll tighten it down completely. I've got it in almost completely tight. The LED bulb I had in for the parking light wasn't in before. Look how bitchin' that looks. This makes it look like a high-end build, but it ain't, it's just a Hyundai. Now that we have everything aligned, we can actually put this light bulb mounting in place, which is these guys. So this goes in here. Now we've got this bracket screwed into place. These clips here just go through the holes and then clip back down, but I found it rather hard to do that with the headlight ends. Let's flip it over here, then put it into the headlight. Only a couple more steps left. Just got to wire the high beam to the high beam section. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but you get a lot better light when you do that. So we've got to do that. And then we'll honestly put them back in the oven and press them together, then they'll be done. Down the old dusty trail, we got some soldering stuff so that I can actually set up the headlights, but we should be good to go. Oh. Fresh. All right, we're back in the garage finally. I got the right solder. The solder that I was trying to use on these headlights was not electrical solder and that made it for a big mess and did nothing. So one, I feel better about myself. Two, buy the right stuff, buy the right kind of solder for electrical work because otherwise you'll have a bad time. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we can wire the power from the projector which opens and closes that lid to make high beams or not to the actual high beam bulb. So we're gonna run the high beam bulb and we're gonna run the projector's ability to make it a high beam in the low beam settings, so double high beam. We have to run some wire through to connect from the high beam side to where the low beam side is to get power for ground. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Come on in. The projector has both a positive and a negative, which is controlling that flapper inside the projector. We need to get a power from the high beam side, which so that when you turn the high beams on in the car, it'll not only hit up this high beam bulb, but it'll make the projector open up to be a high beam as well. So for this scenario, which is kind of different, on the high beam side here, there is just the positive, and the ground is actually grounded to where the light bulb hits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the power to go through to here, and we're just gonna tap off the ground in here because the ground's a ground. This red wire, it might be able to reach through to here, but I'm not gonna go through all that trouble, so we're gonna run a wire, make it a little bit longer through the backside into this section. Get some uh, automotive wire, scientifically measure how long you need it to be. So we're going from here to here. Of course, it's gonna go underneath the back. That looks about right, scientific. Now we need to take the ends off of this to expose the wire, and we also do need to do the same on these as well so that we can connect them and solder them. You can use scissors. I'll show you a demonstration of using scissors. You just kinda don't snip it all the way, but I kinda just rotate it along one point. You can see the Y's a little bit. Get your fingernail, pull. That's one way of doing it if you don't have a Y stripper. Another way to do it, 
guess the same principle is to use some snippers and I immediately twist them so they don't get frayed and stab you and make for a bad time. Of course, you could just tap in by uh, buying some plastic wire taps. That's actually would be a little bit easier, but we're balling on a budget here. Okay, now we need to connect the wire through. Oh, come on. Boom, gotcha, bitch. So this has been heating for a while. It's to its optimal temperature now. I think I have a stand over there. I probably should get it. Anyways, so make sure you got nothing flammable sitting around. The preferred technique for this is to get the soldering iron hot on the wire, then introduce the solder. I got the soldering iron from like Sears a couple years ago. I just got the soldering iron from like Ace Hardware. Make sure you get the specific electrical kind, otherwise you'll have a bad time. When we're soldering, don't do it over the opening in the projector, otherwise you might have a bad time with solder going in there and dripping. What I'm doing here is heating up the two contact points, and then I'm gonna bring my solder in when I it's hot enough to hit the metal, not the soldering tip. There we go. Boom. It's hot enough now. Remove. All right, so let's take a look at this bad boy up close. You can see that it's completely covered in. Here's a comparison. Here's what the Y looked like before. Here it is in its new silver state. We still want this clip here, this connector, to work so that it will connect to the high beam bulb. So this here is all tinned up with uh, solder. We're gonna put some solder onto this and then heat them up and connect them like that. This tip now is loaded up with solder so we can connect it back to this one with just some heat. What we're gonna do is kind of connect them together and the heat from the soldering gun will then Heat the solder up on both of them, and then, in theory, weld them together. If I pull this off, I'll be a pro. Ooh, almost. I think I just did that. Holy cow. That connected. That's a strong connection, too. Boom! Booyah! But do you know what would be a lot easier than soldering? Just buying those plastic connectors, but balling on a budget perseveres. Hell yeah. Now we can wrap this up for good with the electrical tape. And then because this is some weird Y, I might do this twice because this is gonna probably look ghetto. Yeah, it looks ghetto, but no one's gonna see it ever again. We finally got it all soldered up, all covered up with electrical tape. Now it's the do or die moment. Let's see if this works. We're gonna put the bulb in, we're gonna plug it up to the car, we're gonna see if the high beams go on and off with the projector. I only have the high beam bulb in the driver's side one down here. The passenger one doesn't have it in, but the projector should act as a high beam. So let's cross our fingers. All right, they both work. The line for the cutoff is smooth. The high beams turn on. We are good to go. Now all we have to do is take the tape off, take all the bulbs out, and we'll put them back in the oven with the lens and compress them together, plug them back in, and they should be done. The headlights are now back in and we are finally done. We might have to do a little couple tweaks to raise the actual housing itself up and down, which is configurable to how the stock performance was. But I am so glad it's done. This is going to mean I can actually drive at night and not hit people and deers and dogs. Don't want to hit any of those. Uh, it looks a lot better. Makes the car look a little bit newer. It costs under 100 bucks the actual retrofit piece, but a little over 100 with the headlights and stuff. Makes a huge difference. Makes the car look a totally brand new car. I'm really impressed with how it turned out. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll be sure to review how I like this setup, um, but I'm getting tired. I gotta go take a nap or something or read about dog or something. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, post pics all the time. If you have any questions about this or the S2000, feel free to write me a line. As always, keep it real. Talk to you later. All right, I just had a chance to take this out and it's a foggy day today, so it was a good example. The headlights aren't what they need to be. I figured out two reasons why. The bulbs I don't think are in the correct position. It's kind of tough to get in there. And two, 
the actual uh, cheap headlights I got off of Amazon are too cheap, meaning that the projectors actually are too heavy for the housing, which makes them droop down, which makes the light point down. So no matter how much I adjust it, it does not adjust the light up. It's just continuously down because the projectors are too heavy. Keep in mind, it's cheap, but you got to put a little effort in. That's all you got to do.